Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com and I'm coming today with a video about the five most basic data processing steps that you need to know to be able to process data on 80 or 90 percent of your projects. So in the post-processing software that either manufacturers sell you or that third parties sell you, there's tons of different variables that you can uh, uh, deal with, right? There's tons of different functionality that you can deal with. There's many, many different ways to visualize your data. Um, but what I want to go over is the five post-processing steps that I think you need to know in order to get through 80 or 90 percent of your projects, okay? I think that if you can master these five then you are good to go for most of your projects. And for things that are more complex, you're going to need them only on a few projects, uh, um, depending on your industry. But for the most part, if you're in, if you're in utility locating archaeology, if you're in uh, uh, concrete scanning and construction, um, these five are going to take you the majority of your way for almost all of your projects. And you often aren't going to need these five. You just need maybe one or two or three. Um, but here are the five. If you can know these, then you're in a really good position. So number one is a time zero correction. The first processing step you need to understand is that what a time zero correction is. And what that does is it allows you to basically bring up your first reflection event, right? That's typically the ground surface, to zero. And what that helps you do is accurately measure the depths of your targets, okay? So the time zero correction is the first thing you need to do, uh, at least the first one that you need to know. The second one is background filters, okay, background filters. Background filters basically remove any horizontal banding in your data. And this can happen from a couple different sources. It could be something that's far out in the distance that's hitting into your antenna, no matter where you are in your transect. Um, and so that can be, you know, horizontal. It could be you as you're pushing your GPR cart. Um, you're going to be equidistant from your antenna. So it could be you. It could be the system itself kind of cannibalizing your data. Um, but being able to remove that banding often is going to be able to give you significantly more clarity in your data and it's going to help your interpretations. The third is going to be uh, um, bandpass filters. Okay, the third one is going to be bandpass filters. And so you can cut out sort of high frequencies and you can cut out low frequencies and kind of just focus in on the uh, signal that you want. So all, most antennas, all antennas are, are, are sent out a band of frequencies. Your antenna might say, or your manufacturer might say, it's a 400 megahertz. It's not. It's a 400 megahertz central frequency, but it actually sends out maybe between 200 and 700 frequency, megahertz. Um, you also might be taking in frequencies from external sources that are above or below your 400. And so to be able to remove those, which tend to be either drift or noise, is going to help you focus in on your targets of interest and clarify some of your you know, data, up, clear, your, clear your data up so you can identify your targets. Uh, so that's three so far. So let's see. Number four is going to be your ability to regain your data. That means your ability to jack up or suppress the amplitude of your reflections. And being able to do this appropriately and equally throughout your profile is going to help you enhance the targets of interest, um, but also potentially remove some of the amplitude from things that are just uh, um, clutter. And so being able to adjust your gains appropriately is going to be, is, is, a, is a critical step. Um, finally, I will say that being able to, uh, um, to measure wave velocity is critical. So being able to measure wave velocity, um, typically by doing hyperbola matching, at least in post-processing, but also you can do it on your most GPR systems. And so there's another video where I talk about uh, calibrating your instrument, taking extra time to calibrate your instrument. Um, go check that video out. I'll, I'll link it up here uh, or, or put it at the end of this video where um, you can check that one out. But if you're going to spend a little more time calibrating, then in real time, you're going to have more accurate depth evaluations. So the same thing in post-processing software, getting that really accurate time, you know, a velocity is going to help you uh, uh, determine accurate depths for your 
uh, targets of interest or your geological layers or whatever the case may be. So those are the five that I encourage you to know. Um, I would say that one other as, as a bonus, okay, here's number kind of six, is being able to do topographic corrections because because uh, correcting your data for topography is going to really put everything where it's supposed to be. Um, is important for creating an actual image that's interpretable, uh, especially if you have complex topography. So kind of as a recap, you know, time zero correction, background filter, band pass filter, uh, see if I can remember them, gain adjustments, um, and uh, 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 velocity estimates for, you know, through hyperbola matching, and then sort of your extra one is uh, uh, topo topographic corrections. I got them. I got them all. So being able to do those is going to be very critical. Um, if you can think of one more that you use regularly that I didn't mention, put it in the comments below. I want to know if you think I missed one of the most basic uh, fundamental processing steps that should be used on almost every project. To me, if you can get those five or six down, then you are pretty golden on 80 to 90% of your projects. And I'll tell you why, because the goal of processing isn't to pretty up your data, right? The goal of your processing is to help interpretability of your data, to help you come out with some knowledge about what's going on below the surface. It's not just making a pretty piece of art that you can show your client that you can show at a conference, you can whatever. It's about interpretation and accuracy of interpretation. Sometimes more and more and more processing is not going to help you get any more uh, uh, interpretability out of it, and it's going to waste your time. So there are other processing steps, migration, deconvolution, uh, um, and, and others, uh, but those are more complicated. And so I would argue that these are what you really need to get through most of your projects. So if you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment below about anything that I missed that you think I missed, and pop over to learngpr.com for, um, and put in your name and email, and you'll get our free introductory training video uh, where I cover the fundamentals of ground penetrating radar. And, uh, uh, and if you want to learn more about data processing, hop over there and enroll in GPR Basics. We have an entire one hour module on those five steps and it'll really help you enhance your ability to process your GPR data. So thanks as always, I appreciate your attention. Go GPR everything that you can out there, and I will see you on the next video.